Welcome back to another episode of Stay Hot. I'm Bladen Kirk, joined as always by my two favorite co-hosts of all time, Matthew Sponauer and Theo Ash. And today we are here to deliver the Stay Hot Mock Draft 2.0. Should be one of the mock drafts of all time, but I imagine it'll surpass everyone that has 16, 17 quarterbacks going in the first round. So... You know, yeah, to to <laughs> to put it simply, we're we're all gonna make one pick and then it'll go to the next person and then they'll make one pick and I have every third pick and Theo has every third pick and Bladen has one of every third pick. Yeah. So and we're doing we what we would do. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was gonna say, Matt. The way we're doing is the what what we would do. So our other bonus and why we're the top podcasters in the game right now is we are adding one more pick to the end of the first round because <laughs> yes. Matt wants the Panthers to make a pick at number 33. And I'm sure there's many a Panthers fan out there who wishes that these mock drafters would put in the extra effort to make one more selection so they could see the Panthers. <laughs> and that's what we're going to be doing here today because we have yes. a thoughtful Carolina sports fan. So we've given the Matt pod. the we've given Matt the third pick so that when it when it finally gets to that thirty third pick he'll be able to pick for the Panthers. Exactly. He must must be nice to have a, a team so close to the first round. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we just keep extending it out yeah, a little could, bit could, more. Can we until... do the first fifty two picks actually? <laughs> and then can we get the Packers like one of their you know their second round picks all as well? Uh, yeah, you might as well extend yeah. it out of just a little bit more, and then you might as well move on to the third. But uh, yeah, yeah we'll be so close. But before but we get, get to that, gist. Matt Theo, how are you doing on this beautiful Wednesday morning? We've switched to morning records. We've made the switch. The ops tried to make me have a miserable night last night. They were forcing me to watch Virginia basketball. They were forcing yeah. me to get exposed to burn after reading is better than Fargo takes online. Oh, well, it, were... it's, 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 it's less of a burn after reading is, is, is great take and more of a Fargo is overrated. And I'm, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's true. I am. You're... Matt would rather watch a movie that takes place in Britain and everybody has British accents instead of Minnesota ones, and then it would be a, a ten it's out of just, ten. Well, it depends if 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 they're you know if they have a British accent and then they look at the camera every time they say something that sounds kind of British, and they're like, no, no way, dude, no way. <laughs> that is not what down happens the in Fargo. <laughs> Yeah, and they, they oh, slow they down the look entire at the movie camera. to be like, look at this conversation, and they're going to say, oh, yeah, but a thousand times. What? Times, that has Slowing to be down it. the movie for a conversation is what makes the movie good. Oh, no. Yeah, you, you can be too slow. Like, they'll have some sort of like, oh, yeah, bud. The pacing I mean, is, is, that, is, that is not bad. Like, I have to find that hilarious. I have to find that funny, right? It's it's not, like, laugh out loud funny, but it's... A big, or or any big, funny at all. I, I find it amusing. I find it amusing. I feel I like I need to watch lie. this now to break I the tie. I cannot tell a lie. Anyway. Anywho. Should we get into this mock draft? The mock Let's draft of all time. Do you, Before we get started, do we have... Do either of you have any trades? No, nah, let's just get into it. Theo? No, I, I don't. Okay. It looked like you were thinking about it for a second, but... <laughs> oh, of course, I'm always thinking about it, but there's nothing that yeah. immediately came to mind, so I didn't. That's fair. I didn't spend a okay. lot of time trying to think of one. Well, I think the way we decided is that I get the first pick, Theo, you get the second pick, and then Mac gets the third pick. Yes, right. and what's interesting about no trades then is like we're probably not going to feature trade ups that probably will happen happen in the draft, yeah. especially with Minnesota looking to trade up but since we're doing what we would do i'm guessing we wouldn't trade up for Jaden daniels or jj mccarthy so it's Correct. not happening in this mock <laughs> <laughs> right yeah that's the thing if, I, if I was just a forewarning here yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't trade up for i i, I just made a video about this too it's like if you if you're not gonna get up to like the top two spots like it's really not worth it i don't yeah. think but yes, which we've 
we've covered on the previous episodes. I'm just yeah. warning all the Viking fans out there. Like it's very clear that your team is not going to be picking at 11 and 23, but in this mock, it, it damn well might happen. But anyway, <laughs> well, with the first pick, I'm going to shock the world and take Caleb Williams to the Chicago bears. No, no way. Dude, he's who I was going to pick at number two. No now my whole way. draft board is. I've, I've ruined your draft. And I'm going to take Drake, Drake May at number two. Um, oh, wow. Shocker. <laughs> they they traded a little bit more controversial now. They traded Sam Howell away to avoid the awkwardness of his UNC teammate um, <laughs> taking his job. It's, it's all so obvious. That's why they did it. And yeah, I so think... Kingsbury better find a way to make it work with May. I don't think that Kingsbury is a very good offensive coordinator hire. I don't like what Washington has really done with their staff this offseason, but if hiring Kingsbury and means they can he can only work with like Jaden Daniels or whatever, like because he's faster, I I don't buy yeah. any of that. So I think that his offense, what little of it there is can work with drake may i mean drake may can run around and bail him out so yeah drake may is super athletic too so right exactly he, he's he's fast he's he can change the art i think he's even more of like a you know a run and like change the arm angle like out of structure thrower like to a to a big extent he's more th that than mm -hmm. Jaden. so yes matt who you taking for the Patriots? Uh, so I don't disagree with either of the two quarterback picks. Uh, here, the debate would probably be between Daniels and Marvin Harrison. I think Daniels is a good prospect. I think he's worthy of, of a first-round pick. But if I'm New England, I don't know if he's quite worthy of the number three overall. I would be looking to trade this if I could, but in this where you can't, I'm just taking Marv. Uh, I don't buy into any of the hype around him not being wide receiver one. Not that maybe teams yeah. aren't thinking about that, but that I disagree with it. I, I say in my <laughs> Ohio State hat. With your Ohio State I, banner behind you. Yeah. <laughs> so I, 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 I think neighbors in Adunze are really great. I don't think they're on the level of, 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 of a Marv type guy. Yeah. I think it's really funny. I really love the, well, if his dad wasn't Marvin Harrison. <laughs> it's like dude do you frank or jr it's like do you think he's the first, first guy to to be somebody's son ever <laughs> like i i don't i don't understand what there's there's multiple dudes in this draft alone but it's like this is a really common thing to have happen and with the yeah. fourth overall pick i will be taking brendan rice you know <laughs> yeah that's exactly <laughs> yeah i don't i don't i don't get it man I don't care. What would it take I, for you to trade back and and pass up on Mars? This is what I this is what I was interested in cuz I think it would be a lot. Um honestly <laughs> probably not quite as much as you guys would expect. I do love Marv, but he is just one player and I, I do believe in trading back. Uh I guess it kind of depends on how far down you're moving. Am I moving say, to the point where I want to give the, the top three guys? If this was the Vikings pick and it was 11 okay. and 23 for number three. Would you take I would, that? Would I, don't, I wouldn't take that straight up, I don't think. I'd rather have Marv. You no. start to add on to that, you get to like another first on top, and it's like, okay. I think you another just Another first. What about, uh, what about those two and then like a second rounder, either probably next year? I'd probably be too scared and just take Marv. <laughs> so it would, that, take, it would take a lot. It, that, yeah, that, that's that would still I would be expect. a lot. Okay. I Mar think we're in a fair enough. That, fair enough. Yeah, well, like, see, the thing is, is like if it was if it was like to pick seven, and I feel like, oh man, I'm gonna be able to get one of like the the top five, you know, non quarterback sure, sure. guys. Or, or the six draft. with giant with the giants. Yeah, it's like okay. All of a sudden I'm like, if I'm gonna get one of those top three receivers, no matter what, I think they're all pretty good. You're offering me like an extra first or like a second and a second. I'm really thinking about that, man. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair. I but I think most offers, I would rather just stay and take Marvin Harrison. I think if you're the Patriots, especially, like, you need to get an influx of young offensive talent. 
they haven't really had a, a big time playmaker there in a long time. Mm -hmm. Oh, so what did the Cardinals do last year? There's there's always the opportunity to trade back and then trade and up. Trade back up, yeah. Which they traded back to twelve make. and then went back to six. We could maybe right. see something like that happen in this in this draft with some of these top teams because there are, are really great blue chip players at the top that would suck to miss out on. But man, I would if someone was offering me a bag to take JJ McCarthy, I might take him up on that. And then there's no reason why I can't <laughs> maybe even move up again. But that's a good point. Like if if a team is like, we really want McCarthy, will you please let us trade up? We're like, yeah, man, just yeah, give maybe. me three, just give me three first round picks and we'll get it maybe. done, man. Uh, I want I want your first round this year, next year, and the year after that. So I, I think that's not out of the realm of possibility. Something and I it could happen with the Cardinals again at number four, which is your pick, Bladen. Um Yeah, I think the before. Cardinals, yeah, Cardinals, same philosophy here. They just need an influx of like talent at receiver. I mean, they could use talent elsewhere, but I mean, I think receiver is the most prominent need right now. Next best receiver on my board would be Roma Dunze. So that's who I would go with at number four to the Cardinals. Yeah, that's what I figured. And he was going to be my pick for the Chargers if he was there. Yeah, he wasn't going to be, man. <laughs> I like Dunze. I think, you know, he's, he's, the more contested catch guy. I'm more of a neighbor's dude myself, but yeah. the Cardinals absolutely need a, a, a serious number one. Um, and I almost wonder if Adunze maybe is a little bit better fit for Kyler, who's going to extend the play and, and put it up there. Yeah, I probably agree because the success he had with Hopkins. But I think in real life, I think they've got a real good shot at Marv. They've got a real chance at him, which would be a humongous steal at four, it feels like. Man, yeah, if, if they got Marv, that would be crazy. But Theo... So that, that puts the Chargers in kind of an interesting position because to me, I think that Marv and Adunze are just the type of wide receiver that they have gravitated towards in the past and who, you know, in the archetype, the big contested catch, you know, reliable target that just catches everything really not just contested stuff that um herbert has thrown to in the past and now at number five i think they sorely need a receiver i love joe alt i think they could take joe alt but they need a receiver they just they just do and yeah. neighbors is there and then brock bowers is there as well the tight end mm -hmm. and i think i would select brock bowers in this case interesting Oh, and I neighbors. don't, yes. And I don't think that is how it will go down necessarily. And, but there's just something about neighbors that prevents me from putting him in the blue chip talent category. I just think the overall physicality of which he plays pales in comparison to some of the top guys in this draft, including Bowers, including Adunze, including Harrison Jr. I think neighbors does kind of struggle versus press. And I worry a little bit that when you get physical with him, he's not going to quite look like the number one receiver that is needed in an offense like this. It, the same way I can project with Harrison jr. And, and a Dunze. And, and I think that, you know, the same reason that Judy didn't work out. I think Neighbors is a lot better than Judy, but I think some of those, Judy is someone who is like, oh man, he's such a great route runner. Oh, he's so elastic. He's so a dynamic, mm -hmm. but he can't really beat press efficiently. And that's kind of his fatal flaw that made him get traded and not work out. And I think Neighbors is a better athlete than Judy, like way better. I think he's faster. And I think better that he's going to have, a, <laughs> yeah, he has way better hands. So I think that, he warrants strong consideration at number five and, and certainly at number six and certainly at number seven and, and in the top 10, I, I would yeah. take neighbors. Um, but for me as a number one receiver in an offense, he just doesn't quite sell me as an, as a, I'm just not totally confident in him as an elite number one. He's super fast. He's, he's well-rounded too, but, I don't know. I think Bowers is as a receiving weapon. Every checks every single box except for the positional value part of it. But I think that the positional he 
could he I mean, be? If he's the number one option, you know. Kelsey's been the number one option, and Kelsey has been a number one option. And in this, like working as kind of a power slot, it's underrated. I I think that people get too caught up in you know if they're aligned there or on the outside. I I think that on the defensive side of the ball. Kyle Hamilton was a super special safety prospect and found tons of, and the Ravens found tons of value out of a special prospect, aligned him in kind of a unique role, and he was all pro. And I think Bowers could kind of have a similar career on the offensive side of that um, with Herbert. If Greg Roman can't figure out how to use him, then fire Greg Roman, you know. (laughs) He's a little bit harder to make work in his scheme because I think he's a bit more unique, but I think you should be kind of looking for uniqueness. And... To me, that's that's what Bowers provides. And yeah, it's building yeah. things out a little weird. I don't expect every team to do that, or I'm not sure if the Chargers will, but I think that's how I would lean. I, I just think Bowers I can't, is... I can't hate on it. His body control, I mean, he catches absolutely everything. After the catch, he's even better than, like, neighbors. It's, it's crazy. Like, after the catch, he's just so smooth. I he's not a great inline blocker which people make the mistake of so maybe you would need to find another tight end and live a lot in 12 but i think i'd be okay with doing that in a hardball world so <laughs> anyway that's that's a long ramble but i like bowers a lot and i would take it bowers to the chargers wow who could have seen that coming not me so matt <laughs> I hope I hope that's how like Mel Kiper reacts to the picks on draft nights yeah. on ESPN. Oh. <laughs> Who could have seen that coming? <laughs> Damn, what? that's crazy for real. <laughs> I can't see it too. What? What? <laughs> no anyway. way. Uh, at, at six, again, I am in the same spot where I'm like debating Daniels or a weapon. I'm like, dude, I'm gonna make the same decision, and I don't dislike Daniels. Like, I, I feel like I'm maybe the highest on Daniels on this podcast. But first off, I think the Giants' offense. You're also the highest on neighbors bad. Bad. on this podcast. I'm also the highest on neighbors yeah. on this podcast. So I, I, I look at the Giants' offense, and I think it's the worst weapons put together since the Panthers of last year <laughs> for any team. You know, it's a disaster, man. I know they have other picks in this draft, but they'd be leaning heavily, heavily on on absolutely nailing several of those. And their offensive line isn't particularly good, and Daniels has a lighter frame. And I, I just worry, you know, I, I don't know how much going to a bad situation exactly affects quarterbacks' long-term development, or if you just get a guy, are they going to be good no matter what once you get the pieces around them? But I, this is one of the rare circumstances where maybe I am leaning a little bit more towards that team is not ready to bring in a QB. And I probably wouldn't take one unless I thought that they were like a rare prospect, at least yeah. this high in the draft. You know, if it was like a Williams or a, honestly a May, the top two guys for me, I'd be like, yeah, we got to do it and we got to figure it out. But sitting here now with Daniels, I just think there's so many other needs and there's guys who I consider blue chips that. I probably would just be fine taking neighbors. So that's what I'm going to end up doing. But I also understand, you know, teams need QBs and you don't know when you're going to have the opportunity to get one. I just feel like Daniels is not the level of insane prospect where I I, I think this might be your only chance to get a guy. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Maybe Daniels works out great, but I'm really worried about the injury stuff. I don't think he's the most advanced like over the middle of the field thrower he's got a nice arm but not you know like a may or williams level one um no and the running ability is really special but a lot of it relies on him not going down and and kind of taking hits and he's got such a light frame so i have concerns um i I, maybe maybe I'm, i'm using the bad offense as an excuse because to be honest with you like if this was caleb williams and the giants had the first overall pick or may and the second overall i would do it, no question. Oh yeah, yeah. But I, I, I think that's, I, I do think that's warranted though. Like, if, I, if he is not the level of prospect to be able to overcome a bad offense, then, like, there's no need to force taking a quarterback. Yes, you need one, but if you, if you draft Daniels and your offense isn't suitable to, like, this is the guy that only ever threw 
He's he's been throwing to Brandon Ayuk. He's been throwing to Malik Neighbors. He's been throwing to Brian Thomas Jr. behind an, it, behind a great offensive line, and all of a sudden you're going to send him to a bad offensive line with bad weapons, and you think he's going to succeed? Any, any quarterback like, in that game. offense right now is not going to play good. He's not going to like if you put right, him on the Giants, yeah. he's not going to. It's not going to be good. Now I'll say and, this: maybe if like I had like the eighth pick and I was the Giants, I'd be doing it. But I also probably would have done more to invest in my receiver room in free agency so it's not this <laughs> dire heading into the draft when you don't really have yeah. extra picks yeah i i couldn't agree more and and really as this process has gone on i've just become lower and lower on Jaden daniels i i think that he gets away with a lot and in terms of decision making it's it's poor and and when he's scanning downfield and holding it and the protection is great. And then he just takes off right down the middle and like gets absolutely trounced by like <laughs> bounced out of the club by like two defensive tackles. Like that's bad. And little things bounced like that out of the club is crazy. over the course of the game, like start to disappear because he hits three bombs to neighbors over the course of it. Right. Like his downfield yeah. accuracy is very good. He breaks off a long one. So he's super explosive. But man, it's just it's gonna it's gonna dry up, and and I think even you, when you look at Fields, and how dynamic he was running the ball at the end of 2022, it didn't really like he was good running it, no doubt in 2023, but he wasn't on quite the same type of tear. I think that these opportunities mm -hmm. kind of come and go when you can rip off these super long ones, and yeah, Fields gets hurt, and Daniels gets is probably gonna get banged up as well, and I think that. The thing that he added to LSU's offense that was special was the downfield accuracy, which is legitimately very nice. And the fact that he wouldn't slide like that was his special X factor is like when he takes off, it's he's looking to score and he's going to do what he can to score. And he has so much speed and stamina that he can he can run for a really long his time. His stamina as well. It's is crazy. Unbelievable. But yeah. that's just not what I Unlimited. want to be. To me, that's just not the special X factor that is going to win a Super Bowl for an NFL quarterback. Like you're just the guy who doesn't slide. That that's not the superpower that I want. He's been in college five years. I think he makes a couple really head scratching decisions per game that will be amplified. He avoids certain areas of the field. He's there's just a lot there that makes me think, man, this isn't a situation like Stroud where. I was too low. I, I I overestimated the supporting cast of Stroud as great as it was because Stroud himself just never really ma didn't make many mistakes. And just the supporting cast being great doesn't make the quarterback overrated just for the sake of, you know, it's, Stroud held up his, his end of the bargain in damn near every single game and his numbers were perfect. And and Daniels over the course of his career just doesn't have Stroud's pedigree. And, and on tape, I think that he, he leaves me scratching my head a whole lot more. So I, I would I would be very, very low on Jaden Daniels going to the New York and winning rookie of the year like Stroud did or or anything even close to that. So I think, yeah, taking neighbors uh, or all to the and neighbors isn't the only pick that I think is forgivable here, but neighbors is a good one for New York. I, I couldn't agree more that yeah. that he deserves to be the pick over Jaden in in New York. So. That puts you yeah. on the clock, Bladen. Yeah. Um, and this is another team, Tennessee, that kind of have a lot of options for what to do here. They did bring in uh, another receiver. So I don't know if that would be the one thing where I'd probably be willing to, you know, pass on if someone, you know, if neighbors were here, I would be willing to kind of let him slide a little bit. But the thing that I keep thinking is I should probably just take the best player available, which is probably Joe Alt. So as much as I like DeGene, who I've also considered at this spot, um, they could use an influx of skill at the cornerback position too. And I love Cooper DeGene a lot, but uh, their offensive line is, especially the tackle play, could really use some work. So... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Alt's a blue chip. I, I would take him, no question. 
This could be I one think... of the easier picks for Tennessee if the the board falls like this. Yeah, I think, it, it, honestly, it, it I think it's going to be way. an easy pick for Tennessee. Basically, almost no matter what happens, uh, they're sitting sure. at seven. We've got two quarterbacks who are insane and obviously going to go ahead. Maybe more, but then you've got Harrison, Adunze, Bowers, Neighbors, Alt. One of those guys has to be there. You're at a good spot in seven, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and maybe they. I think, I think the teams. only tricky thing would be like if three quarterbacks go in the top five, then you probably that have makes two it of even better guys. for you, though. Yeah, that's you have you have that's what I'm saying. The hard part becomes just like, oh, you have two guys to pick from now. Who do yeah, you that, take? That's, but like, that's, yeah. that's a good problem to have. Although that's always going to be true for Tennessee because Alt and Fashinu and you know fought fought new they're all valid i think debates on who the best lineman in the class is so that that probably will be their hardest decision after signing ridley unless they love one of the corners i guess it's not that's the thing I, 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 I would i would th- I, I would think about cooper here i the, think the, the, ta- the tackle class is so good and they it's such a sore need that i yeah i, I almost wonder if if it just is like I, pick I whatever lineman you like, ridiculous that. prospect. I, and I, I agree. from what I, from what I've seen from Titans fans on Twitter, they are very, they want alt bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, I completely agree. I would take alt, but I know that that's not quite a consensus. So that's, I think that's probably their hardest choice is like what tackle they. Like. But to me, it's not a crazy difficult choice. But that puts me on the clock in Atlanta. Atlanta. I, I think I would go with Leatu Latu here. Yep. Um, pass rush is just such a, a glaring need for the Falcons, and it has been for such an insanely long amount of time. And Latu is my favorite edge rusher. Dallas Turner is who I think they will pick. I think that that's probably one of the easier ones to mock at this point. Um, just because he has such like a that's great kind combine. Of- yeah, it's such a great combine. I think it's kind of an open secret that he's going to be the first edge off the board, and like, there's nothing that the Falcons need more. But I, I like lot Latu a little bit more than I like Dallas Turner, and maybe that's silly because Turner is is he's younger and he tested better. But I do think that Latu's hand fighting and his his nuance in that area is something that is super special. And it's he's like a martial artist when you're going up against him. It, there are moves where it looks like he's in the matrix, like his hands are moving so fast and you have to look at it in super slow motion. You'll see, damn, he, he blocked the, the the tackle was using independent hands, like first the inside and then out or whatever it is. And Latu like blocked them both independently, like perfectly and and got right by him. And it happened like in an instant. And I think that that aspect of it is something that can't be overlooked. I know that his athleticism makes it seem like his ceiling is way lower than maybe someone like Dallas Turner's, but man, I think that, you know, TJ Watt is the best technician in the league and look at the product, the, the production that he has on the ball. And, yeah. you know, Latu has that kind of potential as a hand fighter. He's always going for the strip. I think that he could have a ton of impact. And I think that he also doesn't really have any glaring weaknesses in his athleticism i think with like a guy like jared first who probably tested maybe a bit better he did struggle in like the three cone area of it and on tape you can tell that he's a bit stiff and latu maybe doesn't have any like insane power like verse has but he has a little bit of it and he also doesn't have any stiffness to me and and he's a bit bigger in frame than than dallas turner is so when you're looking, when you're adjusting like the sliders of these other edge edges, I think they're kind of turned up a lot in one area for for like Turner and stuff like that. But for Latu, they're more kind of balanced across the board. But I, I don't think that he's a bad athlete. I mean, he tested fine. He tested average in a lot of areas, and you know, a, a fine athlete with the hand fighting that he has. I think he'll it'll fall down the board. But for me, I I just like his yeah his skill set I, 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 I just yeah i just think the technicians are typically the ones that see the most success in the nfl anyway like even i mean if you just look at like aiden hutchinson versus trayvon walker right that's i think pretty clear like who's the better pass rusher at this point mm-hmm. I, I i would take i would take law to pretty easily i I just don't. I think he's kind of can't miss. Yeah, because Latu, he's so skilled. 
Latu and Hutchinson aren't horrible comps for each other. And yeah, I think that you can overrate athleticism and to just get And even though uh, th- and this is, Turner is not Walker. Like Turner will I think Turner, yeah, will be Turner's good. not Walker. I think Turner will be good. I just think Latu is pretty can't miss. I agree. I think it would it, you look at him work and it's pretty tough to imagine that his skill set won't translate to production yeah. at the next time. and he was super productive like he's more productive than turner he's yeah. more productive than, than <laughs> anybody he was number one in pff's pass rush win rate he was number one in pff's pass rush productivity he was you know had tons of sacks this year like he was dominant so i don't think latu will be the first one off the board in the eyes of the league i do think that it will be dallas turner but my personal favorite is latu fair enough Matt, you're here with pick number nine, Chicago again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I was looking at the the board, and I'm like, okay, well, I know Theo's taking La to at eight. I've already <laughs> seen the vision here, even though that's who I would have yeah. taken at nine because another edge rusher is such a big need. Uh, but I'm perfectly comfortable going with Dallas Turner. I still do think he's a really oh, yeah. great prospect. Um, worthy of a top 10 pick. I favor Latu as well. I, I think that the concerns about him are valid. Like he's not the craziest athlete ever, which oftentimes if you're not, it's tough to make you a top 10 pick at edge. Um, yeah. Not in the same way that like Turner is. And he is a little bit older and there are the injury concerns. But I look yep. at those things and yep. like none of those three concerns while valid are focused on who he really is as a player you know and it's like well the athleticism is to maybe the some league, extent but I mean, like the athleticism is it's like but he wins first off he's not a bad athlete he's not some like terrible yeah. athlete or anything he's a good no, he has athlete. pretty good bend and yeah he's he's just not like you know uh i'm it's gonna free. go straight up beat you with with my athleticism and nothing else but he doesn't need to mm-hmm. right and i'm just like okay well are we gonna if, when he gets on the field what do i think is gonna happen I don't think it's going to be like, well, that was a really good, you know, pass rush win for him. Unfortunately, he's 24 years old and they're (laughs) taking the sack away. Like that's probably (laughs) not going to happen. Yeah. Um, Regardless, Dallas Turner is an incredibly good tester and there's good reason for it. Like it shows up on tape. He's incredibly young. Um, He's not one of these guys where, they test well, but then they have like absolutely no game at all, mm-hmm. you know, uh, which I'm not going to name any names from recent drafts, but there have been guys selected like that relatively recently. Uh, I, I think he's obviously got some chops with the hand fighting and he can win in multiple ways. So mm-hmm. uh, taking him as maybe somebody who needs to develop a little bit more than Latu, uh, which is a high bar to be fair. Uh, at, at nine is perfectly fine and, and putting him opposite sweat that turns out it could be really really dangerous it could be really really dangerous for the bears defense i do understand that bears fans probably aren't the most excited about this pick in turner because they're holding out hope for like one of the receivers or bowers or whoever our and problem is that we took agree. them all <laughs> yeah, they, we yeah, like, all like, the guys I, that I agree you so much <laughs> i you i think you guys are right but regardless I think the way the board's falling, you're probably going to get a pretty good player at nine. And even if they wanted to go with something that wasn't as big of a need, uh, I wouldn't be mad at that either. I mean, I, I, some of the corners here are good. Um, yeah. I, I think they've got options. So I went Turner at nine. There we go. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with Dallas Turner. His upside is now very I high. I, I, think, I think him being like – is he is he quite 250 pounds i think that that shows up on tape a little bit where his power is more due to his technique which is really good like he plays really low and has like crazy long arms so Mm -hmm. his initial like long arm move or bull rush like can really he has great leverage but then when it comes time to maybe like throw a guy aside and like get to the quarterback that's where you can maybe start to see like he needs to add a little bit more play strength versus some combos. Like he's just kind of a thin and wiry guy. He's not quite the the sturdy, and and his, his pass rush plans aren't as and like his, I think, understanding of 
blocking and and how to defeat people is is not as strong as Will Anderson, who is as that's as the thing. Good as I, the concern would be that Turner is closer to like Nolan Smith than Will Anderson. Mm-hmm. And he's he's gonna go higher than Nolan Smith. And I I agree. Last year, I think Nolan Smith on film was like crazy good, but uh, yeah, two hundred forty pounds for an edge, it's just tough. <laughs> it's just tough. But there is some of that with Turner where he is a bit, you know lanky and 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 that's really my only issue with him is like he's not quite as compact and coordinated as like the a lot of the number one edge rushers in the league Um, but he's got plenty of like the length is no joke like he's got pretty good like he's got a bag of moves and and he can win around he's got some bend as well that like verse doesn't have which is why there's, there's lighter guys who make it work as well yeah brian definitely, burns definitely. Is, is is one of the the outlier guys although his game is yeah so you know, i like i like turner at nine here i think that he would be probably the direction i would go for the bears as as well so Bladen, that yeah, puts that you weird. the jets at 10 oh man and this this gets interesting this gets really interesting theo you know what i want to do yeah, you probably want to take um, fucking some guy from like Ohio, uh, crazy. <laughs> I don't know. Some I don't. I actually don't know what you want to do. You want to take wanna, Dejean, I would guess. Well, my thought is to take Dejean and make them like the nastiest cornerback room of all time. But um, no, what I really want to do is take Daniels. You like Daniels that much? I don't know if I like Daniels that much. I just feel like they have a lot of flexibility with what they can do. I think their team is already pretty good. And after signing Tyron Smith and Mike Williams, it's like, well, you kind of covered your bases at needing a tackle and <laughs> needing a receiver. Um, it, it wouldn't be the worst play in the world to go out. Like if, if there was a, if there was a s- situation for Daniels to land in, he could sit for this year and then come into next year with a pretty good team around him. I don't think it would be the worst play in the world. It wouldn't be. I just still think like the Jets are in a win now window. And I think yeah, so Daniels, were the Packers. <laughs> they were. They were, I guess, <laughs> but the Jets are really like they sold out for this. The Packers had mm-hmm. let the Aaron Rodgers era run its course. They got a ring that came up short for so many years. Yeah. The Jets are drafted Rodgers to go win something in the short term. And we're still in that short term. And I like their offseason a lot, what the Jets have done. And I think you might as well go all in on unless unless there was someone that you really loved here. And I just don't really <laughs> love Daniels, but it's your it's your pick. Yeah. You know? My other thought is you know, when was the last time Tyron Smith has played a full season? Maybe you should just pick a tackle <laughs> and, and play it safe here. But that's the other thing, though. It's like you're adding backups, and it's that's exactly right now. Yeah, I think you could exactly. take Dejean because he can play safe. Yeah, that's that's what I'm probably that's what I've been leaning towards. I'm like, it's the safe. I think it's like when they lost to safety. And yeah, free agency. Dejean is Dejean is my best player available right now, okay. um, and that's. When you're in a position of a super versatile pick placement like they are, it's kind of what I think we tend to lean to do is just take best player available. I would just I would just say best player available that you can actually get on the field, <laughs> which honestly yeah, does limit right. it limits your options, right? Like I'm not going to take, uh, I mean I don't know whoever if I if I can't actually play them, yeah, unless it's one of the blue chip guys like if Joe Alt were somehow at ten, I'd probably just do that. Yeah, you find a way to get go all for the sake of like my one year Morgan Moses deal or whatever. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but yeah, yeah I, I, I think I, I yeah, I Cooper DeGene to me makes is is probably the best pick here. Um, you know, I think he's really, really a great. Pl- I think he can do basically anything you need him to do. We've seen him break on the ball really well, especially um, in a zone heavy scheme. Yeah, like Tala is running like yeah, he he's. You know, we that the game we you guys have watched us watch him on. They ran almost exclusively cover three, and you know the hard part about cover three is you know you don't always have outside help. So those deep out routes and those um those like comeback routes on the outside are really hard for 
corners to guard, but he was able to break on those a lot as well as being able to stay on his deep third, uh, stay on number two when he went vertical. He's just a very disciplined zone player, and he knows where to be at all times. I, I just don't think you can miss on a guy like that. Yeah, and he's, he's a great he's, athlete. He's great reading route concepts. Like He jumps things really well. And then he's physical, too. So if he's a safety and you have him rotating down, like I have really no concerns about him like tackling ball carriers or bringing down athletic quarterbacks or guarding tight ends or whoever. Like He's six foot one, and, and he's a great punt yeah. returner. <laughs> So he, he adds a lot right. of value. Um, Great ball to skills. His own defense. Yeah. And I think if you were to put him at safety, it, man, his tape is great. I know that like a lot of places have him falling. I know Lance Zerloin just had him mocked at like number 30 to the Ravens. So top 10 might be a little oh bit my tough God. to swallow, but uh, man, he's, he's a great defensive if player. If you let so. Cooper DeGene fall to the Ravens, we should just burn the league. It should be over. <laughs> no, I will not. I will not be okay if Cooper DeGene falls to the Ravens <laughs> this always happens to me it does it does always happen to you and that puts me on the clock with the Vikings and that puts me in a, a situation where yeah now you're in the Daniel situation <laughs> now I'm in the Daniel situation and the Vikings desperately need a quarterback mm -hmm. um I don't particularly love any of the quarterbacks outside of the top two no but at this point, the roster is, I guess, ready. And they do kind of desperately need one. And I, no, I, I just don't know if anybody on the board... I love Fat, Fatanu, but I don't know if they where he would slot along their offensive line. Man, what would I do in, these, in this situation? I thought maybe you guys would take the quarterbacks and this would be easy for me. I'd be like, <laughs> oh, they're all gone. I am, I almost did. Was this close? Mm -hmm. Not making. But that's easy. not this. That's not the situation that I find myself in. No, it's very funny because it's so difficult to do this draft because we all like <laughs> relatively similar players. Like it's like, oh well, if like in real life, if I were the Bears at nine, I could take Latu if I wanted to. But I'm not playing real life. I'm playing against Theo Ash and Bladen Kirk. And <laughs> It's far more difficult than drafting against real NFL GMs. <laughs> yeah, turns out your opponents are better than NFL GMs. I am, I think, going to cheat and play into a little bit what I think the Vikings would do oh. and not strictly what... I, I can't quite decide. Maybe I would take Johnny Newton. Maybe I would take Byron Murphy. I'm going to give them... I'm I'm I've, I've, I'm I'm going I'm blabbering now. That's okay. You're allowed to blabber. I'm not going to say that. anything until you make the pick from here on out. One thing I have been considering is that I might like Michael Penix as QB three, but I don't know. And I and I don't think any of these quarterbacks are franchise guy. Fuck it. I deep down, I just I just can't get there. I just cannot get there. I do not think that they are going to be super great. I think they could work in in Minnesota. I think that they could put up numbers and have be good starters. I think JJ McCarthy, especially, we could be having the Brock Purdy debates with him in this system. I think he's got the quick release and like can rip it over the middle like I think he could put up yeah, numbers. He can't, and, he can't hit out routes, though. So. But again, it's like I do think like he is a limited guy in terms of his tools. I don't think he's this crazy athlete that people make him out to be. I think that he's not even the most athletic quarterback that Michigan had. And when it came down to like run the quarterback, they'd put someone else out there who is like even toolsier than JJ. And like in this class, I'd say Daniels, um, May. Williams and probably Milton, although Milton isn't a serious prospect, are all more toolsy. So we're talking about like the fifth best, best athlete maybe in just this draft class. He doesn't stack up as like this crazy guy. And then you have the problems like with accuracy, throwing outside the numbers. Like I don't think his deep balls have like, I, he doesn't really throw with touch. It's always like this line drive, which I think gets him in trouble. So I just I, I think Darnold could put up numbers as well, and I would just wait for an opportunity that I'm comfortable with. And I would take probably Quinion Mitchell, the corner out of Toledo. They okay. and he's a, beast. 
he's a beast. They don't really have that corner one on the roster that could like lock guys down. I think Mitchell has checked every single box. His tape at Toledo is great. He's clearly the most dominant guy on the field. Then he goes and dominates the senior bowl. Then he goes and dominates the combine. I just think you could actually be getting like a, an all pro type player or, or, a, and, and the quarterback situation, maybe I'm foolish. Maybe these opportunities are passing me by and, and the Vikings toil in, in obscurity. And maybe, maybe I'm a Packers fan and I'm doing it on purpose. So they, <laughs> because I <laughs> want them to Vikings, that, Vikings fans, and we're my, sorry. We shouldn't have. And I can't even bring myself to, 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 <laughs> I can't even my, bring myself to draft the quarterback. And I've, Maybe maybe the bias is just coursing through my veins and blinding me from the yeah, obvious man. decision to take JJ McCarthy or Jaden. But I just don't love them. I just don't love them as as franchise quarterback prospects. And I'd rather take a good guy somewhere else. And I'm I'm scared of the bust potential. So sue me. I'm taking Quinion Mitchell. And maybe Penix is there at 23 for me or something based on the way this how this board is going. All right, well, Quinion okay. Mitchell off the board, back-to-back -back edges, then back-to-back -back corners. Matt, you're on the board here with Denver. I'm going to take Jaden Daniels. Um, yeah, there we go. That's a that's fair. Uh, kind of the similar situation. I mean, you guys are my thoughts on Daniels. I, I do think he is a special runner, even without the not sliding. I do think he has a good arm. I do think the deep ball is, is worth something. Mm -hmm. And even though he's a little bit older, like, I think he could, he has a high floor because of that running, because I, I think, you know he he's not he's not like overly rosen super, like yeah <laughs> it, it, exactly so i i think the broncos offense is also really bad uh, at least their line is better least. than new york but the, but. their line is a little bit better and it's like okay you do have Cortland sutton there which is not a ton but uh, again we're comparing it to the giants offense he would be wide receiver one no question i, I same with the patriots yeah, so I'm like, I, I, I guess I'm, I'm at the point where the opportunity cost of like a really great wide receiver and what is a blue chip prospect to me is no longer there. I really like some of the guys on the board, Johnny Newton, um, Verse, Wiggins, mm -hmm. uh, some of these offensive linemen. But I, I, this is this is getting to the point where I feel more comfortable going Daniels. Oh, Even definitely. though it also is a very bad offense, like the last two, and that's my excuse for the last two. The the Broncos also are in a situation where their quarterback answer is is straight up nothing. At least, at, I mean, it's gotten to the point where I can say at least the Giants have Daniel Jones and Drew Locke. It's like I think the the Broncos might take that quarterback room. Am I forgetting somebody, or is it just Stidham that, that they have at number one? It's Stidham time, man. Yeah, so I think that that is worse than what the Giants are working with. It's more urgent, and yeah, this this is just a better... And there's not a player like Neighbors on the board anymore, so... That's the most important part right. to me. I, I, I know quarterbacks are important, but skipping out on blue-chip guys, particularly blue-chip help-around quarterback for the sake of taking a guy who maybe just isn't like super super high on my board because you just have to go quarterback you just have to do it It just feels like a way to keep yourself down as a team but there's a balance to that mm -hmm. um so yeah, this, Dan, this Dan seems like better value i would love to see twitter if the vikings passed on a quarterback and then the broncos immediately took one that would be <laughs> that would be crazy <laughs> we've we've definitely left this draft having any basis in reality like the vikings staying and then daniels <laughs> falling yeah I, no, no no quarterbacks are taken outside of may and williams until 11 and then they don't go qb probably not bit, going to happen but you know what would it say what what would be said is you know the the broncos took a an elite corner prospect before a running quarterback not too long ago and look one is all pro and one just got traded for wow. a sixth round pick you know so wow the broncos fans should know what can happen in these situations although i don't think quinion is quite the prospect that pat sertan um was no, but anyway no. but he's very good he's very good so it could happen anyway uh who's got the raiders that's played in right i have the raiders and they will also be taking a corner <clears throat> they would take daniels if he was here uh, right. they already have, you know, 
the re- I wouldn't take a receiver at this point. They don't exactly need a tackle. Their defensive line sh- looks to be really good this year. The one thing that they do need, though, is corners. So I'm going to take... I keep going back and forth on Wiggins versus Arnold, but I think I'm going to lean Wiggins just because of his... Um, his quickness, like that start stop ability. Um, I think that could be something that'll be a big, be a big help for the Raiders. Um, especially with their, with their pass, with how good their pass rush could be. I imagine they'll probably run more man, but hard to say for sure. Do you, do you know if they were a more man heavy team last year? I think it was like 75 25 zone. So I think they, they majored in zone, but they ran okay. like a pretty healthy amount of man. And like okay. you said, Bladen, if your pass rush can get home, I'd want to play as much man as possible. I think like that's what I'm the, that's what I'm thinking. And I would probably rather have Wiggins. Man to me is is the meta that I would well, yeah. Man is the meta that I would like to live in. I think Wiggins and Arnold are both very good man cover yeah. corners, like very, very <laughs> talented. Uh so I, I do think yeah. that Wiggins I th- is I think it's athlete hairs. as well. So I don't hate yeah. it at all going Nate Wiggins here. He is weighed in a little bit light, but he absolutely flew at the combine. And yeah, I, I like him. This episode of Stay Hot is brought to you by the spring cleaning champions over at Manscaped. This season, make sure to groom your carpets and the drapes with the leaders in below the waist grooming. Clear out that winter bush with Manscaped's new lawnmower 5.0 and watch your confidence bloom like the springtime flowers. Embrace the season and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our official offer. Go over to manscaped.com and use the code Stay Hot, all caps, all one word for 20% off plus free shipping. Because after I've started using Manscaped, I can say I have finally caught the spring fever. And of course, you know, you hate making a mess. That's why they made this boy waterproof, shave in the shower, in the bath, or even if you really want to, in the ocean. So once again, go and get 20% off plus free shipping with the code STAYHOT. Again, that's all caps, all one word, at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping for the best below the waist grooming in the world with the code stay hot at manscaped.com. Nothing like a little spring cleaning in your pants. Steph Curry makes you believe that you can do anything. I mean, look at me. He has me believing that I can shoot threes when I play pickup basketball. And the Curry 11s are specifically designed with ultimate bounce, grip, and stability to allow everyone to do their thing. New generations of ball players are coming up and showing the basketball world that the old rules do not apply. The future is exciting, fast, positive, and hungry. This NBA season, rock your favorite player and rep his shoes on and off the court. The Curry 11s are perfect for both the committed and casual ballers. The UA Warp Tech makes the shoe feel like it was designed for your feet, locked in no matter what you do on the court. Stop in your tracks with dual-density UA Flow cushioning and traction, an emergency brake that you don't even notice. Steph's 11th signature shoe steps into the second decade of his sneaker career, pulling colorway inspiration from the wonders of a positive and modernized future on and off the court. Take these kicks with you when you leave the scrimmage and rep UA wherever you go. Do your thing. Change the game. The Curry 11 Future Curry is available now at currybrand.com. That puts me on the clock with the Saints. I'm going to take Troy Watanu, who is someone that I have sung the praises of pretty recently, putting him as my offensive tackle to behind alt i'm not sure if he is a tackle at the next level i think that he's extremely versatile and you could play him Mm. at really any spot and the saints need plenty of help the trevor penning experiment isn't working and in fact they're it's really not working to the point where their left tackle situation is about as bad as it gets in the league that's probably where i would start um him out at and yeah i think that he just plays the game he he reacts so well to what's happening it's not like I think I like to avoid guys who just seem robotic and are like, just kind of like going to a landmark that maybe coach told them to, and instead are like kind of reacting to what is happening. I think Watanu is just the best at that. Like he just plays the game so fluidly and finds creative ways to just get guys on the ground. And I I love watching bro play. So I think he (laughs) should be a, a saint here at number 14. Him and Trevor Penning, man. 
Yeah, <laughs> that would be quite the bet. Uh, but he doesn't have the nasty streak of Trevor Penning. He wasn't oh. throwing guys <laughs> and fighting guys at the combine. So how can he be good? Can't. That brings it to me at 15. Um, Colts are one of those teams where I, they have a few things that I'd like to see them do. But this is maybe a little bit out of the range of one of the receivers that I would want to take in terms of just where they're sitting. And yeah. I feel like that's something you can address round two pretty happily in this draft. It's also not a major, you know, you got Pittman back, you got Downs. And um, I like to think that with Richardson back, uh, the Allen Pierce wide receiver three, put him on the outside and let him cook down the field experiment. Will I work. don't, it will. I don't know. I don't Pierce know. Grows, do not lose faith. He was one of the least productive wide receivers no. in the entire league last year. Mind you. If the if if Pierce was a quarterback and not producing, we'd be blaming the situation. We need to do that now. <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, I'm I'm taking Johnny Newton though. I, I I think it's just too good a value at this point. Uh, Johnny Newton, but they brought back Stewart. Where where does he fit in? I guess they did bring back Stewart. I thought that they lost Stewart. To be honest with you. No, no, they they quietly re-signed him. I don't know if that quietly. changes what you want to do, but I don't know if he would start for them immediately. Fair enough. Then I'll just take Arnold. Not <laughs> my. That's fair. I mean, Arnold's good. I think so. Is that? I mean, is that wrong? Matt taking no. Arnold, though, it seems. Well, you know, every corner, you know, has has been taken so far, and God forbid we. We go BPA. So uh, Arnold yeah. is, is a good player. He's, he's an incredible athlete. He's good in and out of like, you know, when, when, when a break happens, he can pop up and then and, and get to it. And he's maybe not quite as physical as Wiggins, which is what I like, but he is a, a little bit faster. And any sort of testing number that's good for him shows up on tape. Yeah. Yeah. It, he didn't test insane, but I think he's very, very good in man coverage. And I think that he's got – you know, I think he does have physicality like Wiggins. It's really difficult to push him around. Same deal with Arnold. Like he had a PBU versus LSU that we watched where like, I think it was neighbors actually tried to like push him upfield. And then he just kind of stayed right where he was and mm -hmm. like broke up the pass at the sticks and yeah, he had decent production on the ball and everything. And yeah, I, I, I think that he checks a lot of good cornerback boxes. He, he doesn't seem to me like a special prospect. Like, Oh man, I'll always remember when, Terry and Arnold was in the draft, but he's, <laughs> he's more than, he's more than fine. Like he's a, he's, no he's Pat great. Sertan, but yeah, really good. Really good. So that brings it to me. It's with Seattle brother. Why did they have to get rid of all of their safeties and linebacker? Like, <laughs> and rough. then there's, and then there's nothing here as far as, uh, like safeties or linebackers to pick. But they need almost everything on defense. They could yeah, use a lot. They could use a lot. And this could be where Newton goes. They could also use some help on the interior of their offensive line. Um, if you don't want to just ride it out. Use but edge. I mean, a lot of things. I, I, do, I do like their edges. So I might pass on edge. And they did bring back... Uh, they do have Leonard Williams, but and I they could what about, maybe you, the other. What what are you thinking, Theo? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> you said what about? I was thinking you know, a lineman. I, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Either Powers Johnson or Newton. Those are kind of the the two avenues that I'm looking at. Um. I think shoring up the interior of that offensive line could be pretty huge. Um, and then if, you know, Lucas and I'm, I always blank up, Lucas and Cross can yeah, stay yeah. healthy, then all of a sudden you have a pretty solid group up front. I think your defensive line is honestly the strength of this defense at this point with Nwosu coming back and Mafe um, and Leonard Williams. Um and then Newton would just make them an absolute force. But 
I, I think I think I'm gonna do I really pass on BPA again? I might. I, I will take Jackson Powers Johnson. The center. Yeah, I, don't I mean they could really I, I agree. He's a he's a good center prospect. They need a center. I, I, he might be, <laughs> I've heard some things that he might fall medically, but we just don't know that. And yeah, so. he, he has short arms. That's the uh, that's the other thing. He has like really short arms, but oh, he was the best player I mean, at the senior bowl. He was he's yeah. yeah and people are saying well. Latu he's, might fall medically, even though he got hurt two years ago, and he's been like the most productive. You never know. Ever. Everybody might fall medically. Yeah. You never know when these <laughs> things are going to pop up. But we got to clip along, so I'm going to just go to the Jaguars. I would love to take yeah. a guard here, but the thing is, they just re-upped on uh, Ezra Cleveland and then pushed Scherf's money into the future. So it seems like they have their starters there and then they signed Morse. Um Latham is my best available player. Yeah. And they also need a left tackle, I suppose. I'm probably okay. taking Latham and finding a spot for him. He's he's my favorite guy left. He is a uh, top ten grade for me. His his power is unbelievable. He would instantly be their best run blocker by a country mile. Like if you have Maybe you can move Anton Harrison to left or replace Sure. I like I don't know exactly where you put Latham because of what yeah. they've done this offseason. But you've got to find a spot for him and they need, still need offensive line help. And to me, he's he's the best available guy. So I know it's not like a seamless fit into like that offense, like, oh, there's just this perfect little spot to fit him into, but yeah, you, you gotta find something. So that's who I'm gonna take for Jacksonville. Fair enough, J.C. Lake. That brings it to me with the Bengals at 18. Uh, now I'm going Johnny Newton. They lost D.J. Reader. Yeah. Feels like yeah. great yeah. value here. Uh, Newton isn't quite in the same mold as D.J. Reader, like, at all. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's just such a fantastic player, and you have a need there. Uh, it, it's my best player available on the board. Uh, he's a real pass rush runner. like the, the, like, lot two of defensive tackles. I mean, like he his, and his he's just yeah. got such quick hands, man. He's mm -hmm. so quick with that. Um, he's a little bit on the smaller side, but I don't think he's like a guy who gets bullied an insane amount in the run game, which is sort of my concern. Like the way that I would not be high on Newton is if a dude his size was getting pushed around. It's like, well, but he's such a great pass rusher. It doesn't matter if you can't stop the run. But Newton, even at his size, doesn't really have that happen to him at a rate where I'm like, yeah, that's not going to work. So I think he'll earn the right to rush the passer. And when he does, he's fantastic. I think it'd be a really good pickup. So yeah, that's what I would do if I were yeah. the Bengals. Yeah, it, it really is like almost a lot to type of argument for him where it's like the athleticism isn't like top of this class by any means. Like he's smaller and he's not like an Aaron Donald where he's smaller and he's just like, just crazy twitchy and explosive but he's got enough of it and like he just wins all the time like his That's hands what I'm saying. are so good and we would watch games against illinois and we're always like who is this defensive like, lineman four, that just keeps winning winning winning, <laughs> winning 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 i mean it's just it's nothing on tape that's, yeah. that is causing him to fall it's literally just like his maybe the fact and, and same thing with the gene like he's had some injuries so he hasn't tested and you know, maybe you're getting someone who's injury prone. So they start to fall in these mocks, but Newton is as good of a player really as I've watched in this draft class in terms of like how he looks and how often he's winning on tape. So I like the pick and blade and you're on the clock here for Los Angeles. And I will be taking Jared verse out of Florida state. Um, with the loss of Aaron Donald, you're going to need to get some pass rush somewhere. I like Byron Young. He performed well for them last year. Kobe Turner, same thing. I think securing up that other edge spot and getting Verse out there would make them a pretty good defensive line group. So he's very powerful. I think that makes Yeah, them, they uh, need defensive talent. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's and pretty and much it. And, the and they, they sweat, crushed the so. draft last year. I think, you know, getting Kobe Turner and getting Turner and Young – last year you know with their lack of early draft capital i think was you know good on them they did a really good job but they need to finish the job and i think you know verse gives them a lot of power there so i'll make them a good is, group i've got the steelers and this is a pretty easy pick to take yeah. fashion yeah still on the board 
and that would be a pretty crazy fall for him. But you know, he to this to me is good value for him. Like I had Latham ahead of him in our tackles thing, and 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 also Fatanu as well. So like he's a little bit of the robotic nature that I was describing earlier, where like he's not he's oversetting his landmarks, maybe like not quite the greatest run defender in terms of his body or run blocker in terms of his body positioning. He's got to be coached up. His punch can land a bit wide. Sometimes it's not as nuanced as I think some of the other guys, but man, his redirection ability, his balance, his size, his anchor is fantastic. It's crazy. Man. Yeah. I think he's a good enough athlete where like at the very least, you're going to get a, a decent pass protector, even if, he's going to be able to win more reps than he loses based off athleticism alone. And that gives him a floor. And then his ceiling is very high as well. So I think the Pittsburgh Steelers would be absolutely like thrilled. And he's a Penn state like guy. This. Yeah. I think they'd be pretty happy. About <laughs> yeah. This. Yeah. 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 So I think yeah. that that would be probably the happiest fan base leaving the first round. If, if Vashinu were to go there and I don't think it's unreasonable. Um, I've heard from, from people like, Hey, like, Fought new, fought nom, fought new. I, I gotta look up this exact pronunciation. I've been pronouncing it different every single time, but uh, like he might be the best offensive lineman in this class period. So the idea that a guy like him or, or Latham could go ahead is, isn't crazy, but um, I don't think he'll fall this far. Well, we're in that part of the board where it's like you know somebody's got to be picked twentieth. You know, someone's yeah. gonna be there. It just feels right, like there's more right. dudes who are worthy of a top twenty than there are, and that's only with three quarterbacks taken in the top twenty, which is far from a guarantee. <laughs> that it'll be that few. In fact, it feels, it feels like it's probably gonna be more. That brings the pit to me with the Dolphins pick twenty one. I think this is another really easy one. Uh, they lost Wilkins pretty brutally. Uh, yeah. That's maybe the. I'm trying to think. Is that maybe the best player that any team lost? In free agents outside of donald but he retired well he yeah. retired <laughs> yeah 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 i i he very well I mean, may be i mean he very well may be you've got byron murphy sitting right here um, maybe i put saquon actually is the best pound for pound player but whatever maybe, it, yeah. it, 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 i don't yeah. want to debate it <laughs> byron murphy here at, at 21 would be fantastic um he is also uh, a little bit undersized, but a pass rushing beast who I don't think gets exposed in the run game or anything. He's, I, I think he has a little bit more power to his game than Newton does. He wins in a little bit different of a way. Um, but he, he, he also has the, the hand fighting chops. I, I think he's a pretty well-rounded guy. And again, him being a little bit smaller feels like everybody's a little bit smaller this year. And it feels like for a while now, all of a sudden everybody's smaller, except <laughs> yeah. for tackles who are now weighing on like on average, 350 pounds or whatever. <laughs> uh, but every other position, the run game revolution is coming. It, it is coming. There we go. <laughs> um, but uh, I like Byron a little bit more than Newton. I think by, by a hair, I love Newton, but Murphy, man, he's, he's twitchy as, as hell. Like, yeah. He's, he's probably a little bit, you know, you were talking about like Donald being smaller, but twitchy. I'm not saying that Murphy is, is Aaron Donald. But no, God, no, no one is, but I, I, I think it's, I think it's very close. There's um, some particle, there's some Donald, maybe particles in, in Murphy particles. that I don't see in, in Newton, but I, I'm not mad. I like both of those guys in the first round, but anyway. All right. So that brings me to, to Philadelphia here. They, I mean, they're they're a great team. So I don't know how much they really need, um, and maybe you just go best player available here. They could use a they could use a corner. I could see, they could use another receiver. You know, we've talked before about how they. Uh, Who is wide that, receiver three? They always have some Devonte Parker. Three, man. It's Devonte Parker. <laughs> it is Devonte Parker. <laughs> that is, yeah. that is a rough going. They could also use offensive line here but it's like who's coming in well see with the eagles you it's a little bit different because they love to do that they love to have more offensive line when they can actually play Which, rightfully that's, so. but that's why their offensive line is so good is because right, they, right. well they really need one too like they really need one right so. and they they honestly probably have enough depth to bring someone in Maybe so I, I don't know. It's that's what I'm trying. I'm trying to remember because I kn I thought they had. I don't. Cause I thought my Lotte used to play guard for them, didn't he? Well, he, he's not going to move. 
you you keep Malata yeah. Dickerson, and then I guess it depends on how you feel about Steen if he's a starter. I guess they did draft him pretty high last year, but their depth is actually garbage now. Yeah. Like if you look at it, it's Fred it? Johnson, Matt Hennessy, Lakita Smith, and Lee Raven Clark. Yikes. So yeah, they could they definitely might... bring in some more offensive line help. But they did draft Steen. Yeah. Steen was kind of a sleeper prospect last year. I think they drafted him what round two? And and it's like again, same thing with like the Jets. Are you drafting a, a first round guy to be a backup? You know, oh, round, they picked him round three, pick two. It was very, it was so. No, I'm just saying, I'm just saying about like this year. Are you taking a guy to be a backup? Like if you take Fuaga or Mims, Fuaga is not backing up Steve. <laughs> no, so. probably not. Yeah, Probably, I think it's just that, how do you feel about Steen, I guess, is your answer. And then yeah. you wait and get depth later. Or do you replace Steen? Uh, do you see Steen your good depth and then you go for a, a replacement? And it depends on how the board falls. And there are some pretty good yeah. guard prospects available here, but. Yeah, I think Kool Aid is probably. Is there. Kool, -Aid's the, Kool Aid's here too. I don't know if Kool Aid would be st starting caliber over Bradbury and slay i mean they haven't been great but could happen kind of soon though <laughs> the way that it played it last could. year plus you need plus who's the third corner <laughs> yeah that's so yeah and who's their safeties too well who's good the safety to take here in the first round at number 22 yeah i think the... yeah so i think the i think the best i'd probably just go best player available which would be fuaga for me at this point I think that makes the most sense. Um, they have other needs, but yeah, I think he'd be. I think he'd fit in amazing in Philadelphia at right guard. I think he would. He it would be like a glove. So, like a glove. <laughs> yeah, which but, puts me on the clock for the Viking. I, I'm just dying to make this Michael Penix pick for them. That's dog. exactly what I'm gonna do. Oh, mm. I'm doing it. Oh, I'm I'm doing it. I think that if. <laughs> I think that he's better than than J.J. McCarthy. I think his arm is stronger. I think he was in a better pro style offense, and like I saw him make throws and take on a workload that McCarthy never did. I think if you put him in this Minnesota offense with Jefferson and and Addison and and Hawkinson, like why wouldn't yeah. he put up better numbers than McCarthy? Like, I don't know. I, I can't really think of a reason. And McCarthy's younger. I know the medicals, like, blah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Medicals, the nerd doctors <laughs> begging me nerd not to Nerd doctors? Take him. Oh, no. Uh, the x-rays of the combine showed the damage. It's, no, man. He, 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 I like him a little bit more than Penix. Uh, I like him a little bit more than McCarthy. I cannot tell a lie. And... This will never happen in a million years, but if I was running the Minnesota Vikings, for better or worse, they'd end up with Quinion Mitchell and Michael Penix, and they would have to get used to the idea. So um, that's my going to be my controversial Vikings right. um, shit, and it's crazy, but it's it's what happened. It's it's part of the stay hot lore now, and it will boost engagement on Twitter, and will make. It, it's all part of our nefarious scheme to make no money off of uh, off of Twitter, <laughs> off of off of off of getting like ten k extra Twitter views, which I believe would be worth right around four cents. <laughs> no, probably probably more if like we, two and a half cents. If we had, uh, if we were able if, to make money, is, which we don't, making yeah, two we, and a half we were... more hypothetical cents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Um, I mean, I get it. I, I, I honestly think Penix would probably, you know, with those weapons, probably be pretty good. Um, I, I can't hate it. I, I know what comments we're going to get, but I, I I do agree that after the first two quarterbacks, it just starts to get a little bit more sketchy. And it seems like every year we do the whole, you know, I'm hearing rumors. The first six picks could all be quarterbacks because if you don't have a quarter, like, you know, mm hmm I think it's I think it's completely valid. I mean, again, this is what we would do, though. So. Saying yeah. that, no, we actually don't think there's five quarterbacks who are going to be franchise guys and first round picks is probably like not that crazy. I, I saw a mock. Maybe it was Zerloins who had it was first four picks were all quarterbacks, and then I think yeah. 
Penix went at 13 and Knicks went at 12. Dude, I, I just I just don't think I it's going to be seven six quarterbacks in the first thirteen. <laughs> and picks, I just man. I just remember like Hooker like a Hooker was a first round pick by the end last year, and I just remember Ritter. And right, Pickett exactly. And it's like dude, he's just not and, that. And has, even going there, back is like Haskins fell a little bit farther than we thought. Fields fell I, a little I, bit look, farther. Look, quarterbacks than we never go at back higher Jones than we think they're going to. So it's like yeah, I, I, I just don't know. But yeah, people maybe said the I'm Niners right. were going to take Mac Jones, and then he fell to what, like 15. We we've talked so. about it. who's we'll we'll move on to the Cowboys and okay, the Cowboys have that. a god. Do they have a million needs? It feels like <laughs> it's very hard to address all of their problems. Yeah. Um, one AJ thing that McCarthy. sticks out to me, dude. How the biggest one being backup quarterback. We know you have to invest now more than ever. And I think being a backup is a perfect fit for McCarthy. I do. So. Anyway, no, um, they lost. Gallup is not on the team anymore. Cooks was not playing at a super, super high level like we're used to. I think they need another weapon in the passing game badly. Um, if I feel like if this team is going to be nice, it's going to be Dak thrown to some super nice weapons and hope that that takes you know a big jump for you or hope that helps you take a big jump. I think they still have a lot of holes to fill, but Brian Thomas Jr. at 24 feels pretty good to me. He is a pretty insane athlete, and mm -hmm. it shows up on tape. He's a ridiculous threat uh, to get in the end zone. Uh, and And – He's not the most refined route runner yet, but it's not from lack of ability to make cuts and to get in and out of breaks. And I think that's what has me excited yeah. about him. And and um, it doesn't have to be like because they've got CD and he's such a good field stretcher. Right, and he doesn't have. Like, it's like he, he, I he'd like. Be great I really like the fit of Brian Thomas in in dallas i i agree i i have I mean, a he improved Mitchell, much Adam during Mitchell. his college career so mm -hmm. it's like this great athlete he produced really well he obviously has the potential to be this and he's already working towards it and he's super young it's like dude that sounds pretty good to me at a major position i'm taking that yeah i would i would grade this very highly if dallas ended up with brian thomas jr but bladen you're on the clock with my packers treat them treat them nicely please Jay, Jay McCarthy, you yeah, never have to be angry. We're going to Jordan Love. We're going to Jordan Love. Jordan Love. His time is up. Jordan Love. Jordan Love with JJ McCarthy. If JJ sits for 12 years. Theo, let me ask the you what would you... plan is already in pace. Please. Let me ask you what you would do. They're your team. What would I do here? What would, yeah, um, I'd probably they go don't need the a safety man. anymore. That's what I was yeah, thinking. Yeah, it's probably a bit too high for the safeties in this class. I, I would probably roll with Mims or Graham Barton. Yep. I so. was thinking Mims. I so. was also thinking Mims. Yeah. I there have no go. issue with it. Okay. So. You're getting you're getting the Georgia tackle. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think Rashid Walker had a held it down pretty well. And I think at right tackle at least, um, Zach Tom is pretty entrenched as one of the league's top right tackles. But Walker, it's not like he can't be upgraded on and yeah. Um, I think I, I do think the Packers would maybe be more likely to go with Graham Barton because they love the versatility and like you could put him so easily at guard. He's just got yeah. that body type. So I, I honestly would put money on the Packers taking Graham Barton. I, I think that it is all kind of leading up to that. But I've That's seen Mims fair. get mocked plenty and to, to imagine that he would be an upgrade over over Rashid Walker. You don't want to get satisfied that Walker went from like bad to, to capable, right? Like you could, right. Mims is, could be very special. So if, if next he, time we got to remember to give you the first pick so that you can get your pack. Oh, you time. know it. So, I mean, I would have done basically the, the same thing. So it's, yeah. it's all right. So I'm on the pick now with, with Tampa Bay. I'm going to take Adonai Mitchell for them. Um, I know wide okay. receiver is not a huge need, but I really, really like Adonai Mitchell and think that when Evans inevitably 
loses a step at age 30 you know it's it's chris godwin is a little bit on the older side as well and then you need three wide receivers and 11 personnel and i trey palmer is nice but i just love that night mitchell i just do and eventually he'll take over and it can be palmer and and mitchell and then maybe evans will be gone i i i just love that nine mitchell and i know it's not listed on pff's list of needs here but again like yeah. i i'm not sold on any of the edges that are left above above him or any of the corners that are left above him like this is kind of a best player available take and i don't know exactly how the playing time would work early but i think eventually they could have nabbed a an elite wide receiver one maybe before they absolutely need it but it's still worth it the, the tight end they could maybe use like not not anything there you could take Graham barton Graham barton would be a pretty safe pick but the ceiling of mitchell like i i'm I, i'm in love with it so at pick 26 it's not a clean fit for the team but that's what i would do i think and just we'll see right. how the playing time shakes out and if there's an injury then you're all good so yeah Brings it to me, pick 27. Arizona. Kool-Aid would also be a good pick. I, I would also have been a good pick, but... I, right, I'm, I'm going. My overlook I'm might be your gain here. Yeah, I, I... Look, Kool-Aid has fallen down draft boards because of, um, like, not being the craziest tester of all time. Unfortunately, he is really, really good. And he's also... I think we've gotten to the point where, like, I like the value, the physical. Like, I just picked Brian Thomas. Like, he's a lot, yeah. a lot of the physicals. But we've gotten to the point where we ding guys not for being negative athletes or being guys where it's like, okay, well, this is a humongous problem for him, or his mm-hmm. speed isn't good enough, or he's not. We we ding guys for not being like, what do you mean your your RAS score is under nine point five? Why would I take <laughs> you in the first round? Yeah, and it's yeah, like yeah. I feel like we've maybe overcorrected a little bit for that stuff, and it's bizarre because we always remind ourselves like, oh, you know, the, the combine it doesn't really mean all that much, guys. And then yeah. we we forget it instantly the second that it happens. Kool Aid right. is uh, another like super physical corner. I love him for that. Um, he's super smart. He's, he's been again, stamped I, since he's been one yeah, he's been as a he's been locked starter. out. Yeah. His role has always been you know go and and. Be a super serious number one. You take the super difficult, you know, uh, assignment. Uh, he can mirror guys well. He just feels like a really strong overall corner, man. And then it shows up on tape. If you're if you're watching yeah. an Alabama game and you aren't specifically watching for him, you might not see him that much. And you're that's a sign of a very, very good corner, in my opinion. So he's yeah. he's never gotten targeted. And and him and Johnny Newton both, I think, have are their tape is great. Like their production is great. Um, I do think you can see like they're not the craziest to crazy athletes, but they're still having success. And I see them get pushed down these boards into the twenties and the thirties. And yeah, they're probably going to be a lot better than the guys. Some of the guys picked ahead of them. Although I will say with Mitchell, Mitchell is not any kind of j- just a combine warrior. I'll say, although he did have the nine point nine seven, I like it. So I I stand by. There's nothing by. wrong with a nine nine seven. There's just other ways to get it done. But don't get me <laughs> wrong. Yeah. yeah, like I stand by my pick at twenty six. Um, although I should have mentioned that Kool Aid is a strong possibility for the Bucks. But anyway, Bladen, you're on the clock with the Bills. I am on the clock with the Bills, and Theo, I'm going to take a similar path to what you did for Tampa Bay, but it might be a little bit more of a glaring need to take a wide receiver. Uh, outside of digs, they just don't see a whole lot of production out there. It's, it's, it's about to happen for Shakir though. Trust me. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, it is. Oh, it is. I'm waiting but, patiently. But until then, oh, it's you <laughs> saw it in the playoffs. You it paid it. It's coming. It's it's not like this okay. is never. Making even any but progress, even but. even even still, even so, you know, right. we even still like we were even talking about the possibility of them trading digs this offseason because, you know, his performance even dropped a little bit. And even if he can bounce back next year, he's been you can still tweeting to. He's been cryptic tweeting, you know. There's definitely a world where he's not on the team in the next two years. I think there's enough talent here to, to, 
you know, kind of bank on, bank on a guy, and you know maybe he can form some some better chemistry with Josh Allen. Some might call this a reach, though. I'm going to take Xavier Leggett. Um, mm. He's I, he's I my next it. he's he's my next highest receiver. Big body, catches everything. Um, we saw him play in a very very unconventional uh, South Carolina offense. And he just, he always balls. Like, he's just a baller, man. Uh, if, if you can get the ball out of your hands, it'll probably land in his. Uh, yeah. I, I, just, I, I just feel like that could be a really good fit for Allen. Uh, on top of he's my, like, best available receiver. But I think, I think he could also be a really good fit for Josh Allen. Yeah, he's a beast. He's a beast. Yeah, he is. I, I like him, I think, more than... Not as much as you, Bladen, but I've since the combine, I've kind of warmed up again to his tape. And <laughs> when we did the wide receivers episode, yeah. I had Troy Franklin as my number five outside of Mitchell. It, it, it has been coming back around where I should be considering Leggett a little bit more because he's as fat, like he's so fast and just burly. Yeah, he's, he's just burly and huge. And he, <laughs> That's what he, he's, his he's giant. His catchability is no he's, joke. He's either. 220. He catches everything. He he has a forty inch vertical like. <laughs> yeah, he's he's quite yeah, nice. He could be he's, quite he's the explosive special. weapon. He's very special. Which puts me on the clock for um, the Lions, and I'm gonna take a corner that I think is very underrated in this draft class, and that's Kamari Lasseter out of Georgia. I mm. feel like every time I've seen him, he's been kind of popping off the screen, and those are guys I haven't dove into his film a hundred percent yet but he's charted very well like he only allowed 15 receptions last year in 408 coverage snaps and man he he's athletic he's not the biggest of corners but he moves around well he is always in a good position it feels like to make plays and they need corners in the worst way and i just I think maybe it, it. He's not the freak. He doesn't have like the same size, weight, speed as as a, you know, a Quinion Mitchell or a Terion Arnold or something like that. So he is falling a bit farther down the boards, but he's coming from a great defense. He has tons of results he can point to, and yeah, he's he's flashed whenever I've watched him. So Kamari Lassiter, I don't have a full scouting report on him yet, but uh, when I'm looking at the board here, that's a, that's a name that's really speaking to me here for Detroit. So that's what I'm going with. Here we go. Matt, Baltimore. I think I'm going to go Graham Barton here. Uh, it feels like maybe a hair of a drop for him, and they, they lost some some power on the offensive line. Somebody who's versatile like him and who can do what they want to do in the run game feels like a pretty solid pick here. But there's some other ways it could go. Um, you know, they might need another edge guy. Um, if you like somebody there, like Chop maybe or uh, – they could use some more secondary help now, but I'm going Barton. I really hate you, Matt. Yeah. That's, <laughs> <we're good>. <laughs> that's what I was going to do it for San Francisco. And I was like, oh, maybe he won't. <laughs> maybe he won't take. Oh, but I will. <laughs> oh, but you hate me. No, nah, but that's exactly what I wanted to do for San Francisco. Because same thing. They, they could really use some help on their offensive line, too, um, outside of Trent. It's not exactly the the greatest group of all time. There are some nice offensive linemen still on the board, though. There, there are, there are. I just, yeah. I, I was aiming for the versatility, though, it, because they could, yeah, they could use kind of a little bit of everything. They could find a spot for him, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it would. There's no way it doesn't like play out well for them. I think, but I will take. I, I will take Tyler Guyton from Oklahoma, I suppose he would be the next best guy. I yeah. think he's super raw, but yeah. he moves, he he's crazy fluid. And, you know, if they want to be running their wide zone stuff and he's got to be, you know, taking a big first step and mm -hmm. getting out into it and, and overtaking guys and reaching him, like he might be able to do that at a really, really high level uh, in, in this offense. So he to me would be kind of a risk, but at this point, it, it would it, late in the first round. It's it's a risk that I think I could understand <laughs> for San Francisco. 
Yeah, I was trying to see if maybe I was like, uh, could I maybe take a receiver here or but there just wasn't I didn't see anyone that screamed yeah. great fit. So that brings it back to you, Theo, Kansas City. You really let Kansas City get um, <laughs> um Come on, man. don't do this, man. Um <laughs> uh, Keon Coleman or Troy Franklin, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Pick one of those guys. <laughs> uh, they really let them get. Um, I'll say Keon Coleman. They really let. We really let Mahomes oh, get Keon wow. Coleman. I thought you were going to so do it. We too. really let them. I thought you we were. Really I thought you were going to. Matt wait. has a 33rd pick, and I know who he's taking. Come on, man. Lad. Oh, wow. Lad McConkey would be a very easy selection for the Carolina Panthers at 33. They need someone who's a beast. <laughs> and Lad is a beast, bro. Um, yeah, man. Nobody, nobody gets in and out of their breaks and sells routes like Lad in the whole class, I don't think. It is ridiculous to watch. It is nasty, nasty stuff. He's a little bit smaller. He has to play in the slot. So none of his yards will count, of course, which is too bad. <laughs> um I'm pressing his ass, sadly. Locked. Locked. I don't care. I don't care. Um, no, I, I, I think I think he's a fantastic player. I think he's going to be really productive. And somebody who feels like make the uh, the quarterback's life a little easier uh, is, is what's desperately needed. Getting a couple of him and Johnson, getting a couple of guys who really can separate and get some space, that's going to be a big change from what we had last year. However... If there was not a wide receiver here that I loved, I would be very comfortable going with another position. You got two more picks um, at 39 and 65 where you probably feel like somebody you really like is going to be there. I would have been fine with Leggett at 33, and I would have thought about going Chop Robinson. Receiver's a bigger need, but Chop, I think, is is really, really good. And yeah, they Chop, need an edge he is really bad. bad. Chop yeah, is nice. He. Guys. He doesn't have like the power aspect to him. I, I saw very few bull rushes even attempted by him um, when I watched the tape. But the the speed and the bend from him is just no joke. So I could I could see him sneaking into the first, but I could also see him realistically getting picked in the second as well. But I think it all played out relatively fine. Outside but of quarterback of course, stuff outside of the quarterback stuff definitely is what's weird. The quarterback stuff is weird, but. Yeah, just, we didn't do any trades, so it's... And it's I feel like weird. we're not, like, that far off from public opinion on these quarterbacks where it's, like, there's two that are great. And then I feel like the average Twitter user who is listening to this podcast, like, it's not like Twitter loves J.J. McCarthy to go as, like, a franchise guy. I feel like a lot of people love Daniels. I feel like a lot of people love Daniels. Yeah, that'll probably... My Vikings picks will will get this the engagement it so desperately needs, but outside of that, it um, outside of that, I think it went well. I think I think it went pretty well. Fashionu falling will will draw the ire of many, but whatever. Maybe Cooper DeGene went a little higher than I feel like most people. Yeah, like yeah. Him, but I like him, so cope. Sue me. I don't know. But that's our mock draft. If you hate it, leave a comment. If you love it, leave a nice comment. Uh, <laughs> but thank you all for tuning in. We'll be back with another episode, you know, on Monday. Tons of tons of content coming away everywhere. But until next time, we will catch you on the Flippity Flop. <laughs>